Thank you, RV and Lifestyle Ambassadors, for joining us for today's webinar. We're Mike and Betty Gill, your Lifestyle Ambassador Coaches, and we are currently work camping at Claybo's RV Park in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. There's snow on the mountains, we're told, but the park's closed, so we can't get up there and uh, check out the mountains. But we sure hope this finds everybody doing well. What another interesting couple of weeks it's been. We sincerely hope this finds each of you safe from the issues associated with the COVID-19 virus. Our thoughts and prayers are extended to our nation's leaders, our medical and emergency staffs on the front line, and to each and every one that is and has been affected. Right hot off the press today, Work Camper News Executive Director Jody Duquette has developed a new booklet that we can include in our new member packets that has a dedicated section on the bottom of the title page for our ambassador referral numbers. You can find the booklet on the RVing Network website in the advertising materials section. Now it's the last booklet in the informational product flyer section, and it's listed as WKN for Work Camper News, booklet for dreamers and work campers. Thanks, Jody. We appreciate you and Luke and all you do for the ambassadors to keep us uh, up to date on great information. Today, our webinar topics address the who, the what, the when, the where, and the why of the NRVTA, which is the abbreviation for the National RV Training Academy. And you know, as always, it's our hope that each of you take away some tips and tricks to assist you. Now, while I'm thinking about it, don't forget to utilize our special RVing Network Facebook page that has been created just for you to share your successes and suggestions as you travel this great USA as RVing Lifestyle Ambassadors. Well, we are very privileged today to have joining us all the way from Heber Springs, Arkansas, the home of Work Camper News, Dana Rose. Hey, Dana. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Dana is Work Camper News Director of Administration and RVing Lifestyle Ambassadors. Now remember, if you've got any questions during the webinar, please post them in the area provided on your screen, and we'll address them at the close of the presentation. And as always, today's webinar will be recorded and available for your future viewing. You will receive an email notifying you of the link to the recording on YouTube. All right, so get ready. We are very excited today to have the one and only Texan RV professor, Terry Cooper, joining us from Athens, Texas to educate us on the NRVTA and its importance to us as RVing Lifestyles Ambassadors. Cooper, Take it away. Thank you. Well, guys, I want you to know my mother still loves me, okay? Just know that. <laughs> okay, my mama still loves me. In fact, I talked to her today. Um, Amen. Those of you that have been involved in the lifestyle, we may have met. We may have spent some time together. Hopefully, you've taken some classes with us so we could have at least developed a relationship because that's the whole thing about this lifestyle. It is a relationship business. It really is. Those of you that we've met on the road that have never had a chance to come to Athens, you have an open invitation to come. Uh, it's because of you guys that the Academy was built. And I, you know, we'll be able to share a lot of stories. And you know, I had a gentleman say, when well, are you gonna write a book about this? And it's just like, man, we don't have time. Things are too busy. So let me walk you through some things. And remember those of you that have been in class with us, we always talked about the Uncle Fred in our life. You know, the one that you'd go to and have family dinners together and Uncle Fred would tell you the same stories over and over again, like you had never heard it before. Well, I'm going to have to ask you to pretend I'm your Uncle Fred. Give me the, you know, cut me some slack here. I don't know exactly what I've shared with you up to this point. So 
<laughs> you're going to get the full meal deal today, okay? Now, everybody knows, or at least I'm hoping that we kind of get the word out that all roads lead to Athens, Texas. When we were looking for this facility, we were told by this big realtor who handles nothing but real estate in the state of Texas, and his specialty was RV parks. And he told Steve Anderson and myself, folks, I'm sorry, there are no RV parks available. There's nothing, unless you want to buy one of those man camps out in, in West Texas. And Steve and I agreed that the God that we serve is greater than some realtors listing. Mm -hmm. And through a long short of things that took place, Next thing you know, there's this RV park that came available, and I came by all this information, but not by one, but by two separate sources. And so we came and we looked at it, and we think, yeah, this 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 has all the markings. So we bought the property, and then within one year, we had built the Big Red Schoolhouse. Now, if you've ever met Lady E, you know she's a very unique lady, and she sees things differently than Terry Cooper does. I had envisioned it would just be a metal building, just some, you know, like a, a machine shop or a garage or whatever. And she said, oh, no, oh, no. And so she was looking through one of the magazines at the, uh, the company that, uh, that was going to be putting the building together. They had all these brochures and everything. And she said she pointed to a picture. She said, that's it. And I said, honey, that is the Budweiser Clydesdale barn. <laughs> she said, I don't care. That's what it's supposed to look like. It's, and we're going to call it the Big Red Schoolhouse. And so I keep kidding her. Someday she's going to have to find one of those big fiberglass horses that we'll put out there. So what we were looking for is a Clydesdale to put out in front so we can really mess with everybody. When it was being built, people were, you know, we would meet them in town they, and we'd, we'd tell them who we were and what we were doing. I said, oh, you're the one out there that's got that, you're putting into that big old barbecue barn, right? Or that beer barn or that dance hall. And I said, no, 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 it's going to be a training center. So we've begun to get Athens acclimated to, to such a point to where now we get phone calls from the Chamber of Commerce wanting to know, hey, can we use one of your classrooms again? The, the realtors around here. So they've begun to realize who we are. So this is the Big Red Schoolhouse. Now it's um, 15,000 square feet. It's, I mean, guys, when I was dreaming, I could not dream that big, but that's okay. We have, when you have people come alongside of you and start to show you things and you think, well, yeah, I can make my dream a little bigger, a little bigger. And so now, like I said, we've got the 15,000 square foot facility, has three large classrooms, service bay but i want to show you what it looks like when you walk in the front door you're greeted by a big receptionist desk and then if you look at the photo on the right that's lady e talking to a visitor who would come in to talk about renting the facility because this is not only the big red schoolhouse but it's also the community center and here in athens as large as it is they do not have a very good or have really no meeting places other than maybe the high school gym so here is a grand opportunity for us to be able to share the story. And like somebody told me one time that was in the media, I said, Cooper, you gotta be telling your story and you gotta tell it often. So I'm just gonna tell you, this gives us a chance to tell our story. When Lady E told me she wanted to put a big ceiling fan in, I'm thinking to myself, okay, you know, like what? And then she pointed and said, right here, like this windmill. I did not know they made these type of windmills or this type of ceiling fans, but here you go. Now, I wanna take you into the building. Now, this shot is up from the second level because the front part of the building where all the dormers were that you saw is two levels. We've got the ground where we have some classes and the, and the main entrance, the restrooms, the kitchen, and then up above, we've got a conference room, we have Lady E's office, and we also have a video studio. So what I'm doing here is I'm hanging over the balcony right outside of where the door is, where the video studio is. And so you can see what the bay looks like. Now, what I want you to look at is way down at the far end. Let me bring it in a little closer for you. Okay, down at the far end, you see that catwalk, that balcony on the left-hand side, you go up those stairs. It was built to train RV inspectors. It's built so that way, if you have a class of 30 people, we can all get up onto the balcony. And the instructor and the current instructor we're working with now, most of you, if you've come through and become inspectors, we've probably worked with Howard and Pam Jaris. But it's built so that way they, you and I can stand there on that balcony and we can look over and see Howard up on the roof showing us things. Now, we've also have a television that 
we have it suspended from the ceiling. So this photo doesn't show it, but if you could just, you see that one little light that's directly over the iGo trailer? Well, right up in that area is a huge big screen television, and we use these GoPro cameras. So Howard will go up on the roof, take his GoPro camera, and people can see him, but then he takes that GoPro camera and he can zoom in on the areas of the roof so he can show specific flaws and things that we need to be looking at, okay? Now, little things make a big, big difference when you're having class. For instance, this observation deck, the handrail, my concern was I just didn't want anybody to get up there and sit down on that thing and run the risk of falling backwards and getting, you know, getting killed. So what we did was we built those handrails to where the, the if you notice right here, this wooden rail is at a slope so you can lean on it, but you can't sit on it because it's uncomfortable to sit on. Now, I know if, if you ever shop at uh, Tractor Supply, these are hog panels. I know. When I was trying to tell Steve what we we're going to do, he looked at me and said, Cooper, are you sure? I said, oh, yeah, Steve, it'll look great. Well, we had some folks, some work campers came in and worked with us. I mean, they were a heck of welders, and they built all of the, the handrails, everything that we needed for the catwalks and for the walkways. Now, this is a picture from my office. So if you can imagine the IGO trailer and the catwalk is to the left. And what I did is I took some photos. I wanted to show you some of the equipment that we're bringing in. Lippert, you know, the folks that provide most of the frames and the running gear and the leveling legs, sent us two frames, a fifth wheel and a travel trailer. There are only two, now today, there are only two places in the United States that they can do hands-on training. One is at their factory, the other is here in Athens, Texas. So they come to us three times a year and do factory training to dealer techs. And all the other time, it's available to us to use in our classes. So they shipped this to us with the understanding that we would, whenever they did their classes, we'd make it available for them to use. And we do. Now, this was another class. We actually had such a large class, it was too big for the, excuse me, too big for the classroom. So here we've got Todd Henson teaching this class. And so what we did was just set up. You can see the RV to the left. We bought seven travel trailers. Remember when Harvey hit, uh, Harvey the hurricane hit off the Texas coast? Well, FEMA responded and brought in all of these travel trailers. And then when, when they kind of got everybody all squared away and situated, then they started pulling back trailers that had not been moved into. And then they put them up for sale. And so we were able to buy seven units that we now use to train on and to work with. And so by having hands-on, as you guys know, it makes a world of difference in what you're trying to accomplish if you can put your hands on it. So whether you're putting your hands on the metal frames and the, the running gear and the hydraulics, or you're putting your, your hands on the awnings, but anything that you and I can handle, we can touch, we remember, and we maintain that information. Now, I take a shot here through one of the classroom windows. One of the things I wanted to do was to make sure that we wouldn't disturb the classes when we had visitors. So if you'll notice in the back, there's some, some windows that you can peek in through. And so that's what we do now. I'm taking a picture through one of the doors, had a window built into it, and there's a class going on here. But we put big screen televisions in there, a big whiteboard, so that way the training can take place. Now, in this room and out in the service bay area, there are receptacles every eight feet, just wall receptacles. And every single wall receptacle has its very own circuit breaker. So one receptacle, one circuit breaker. And we went ahead and put a 20 amp circuit breaker. So that way, if we're doing, uh, let's say refrigerators or we're doing air conditioners or whatever we need, and we've got a, a workbench set up to where somebody's learning by doing hands-on, they can plug into a receptacle and there's enough power to run that air conditioner without blowing circuit breakers. If you've ever been at a, a church social or some activity where everybody's bringing in their crock pots, you know, and everybody says, oh, there's a receptacle, and pretty soon what happens? Everybody's plugged into one circuit and we're popping the circuit breaker. We wanted to eliminate that, so we took care of it on the front end. This building has three-phase electrical brought into it because we don't know where this thing's going and we don't know how it's going to grow. But this I do know, 
If we build it like it's supposed to be, we can do all types of training. As a matter of fact, we've got on the books to come up here the second quarter of this year, we're going to be teaching generators and we're going to be teaching solar. So along with the other courses that many of you guys have been involved with, we're taking it to another step, another level, because by taking these classrooms, this equipment that's being given to us, it's been phenomenal what we've been able to do. Those of you that have been involved in the industry know when you go to buy parts, you know, you go to a dealership or some sort of supplier. Well, the organization that provides products for these guys is a company called NTP Stag, and they are a giant warehouse distribution center. We got a phone call from them. They said, Cooper, we see what you're doing down there, and we want to contribute. Instead of giving you cash, could we give you product? And I'm thinking, well, sure, that sounds great. I'll, you know, At this stage of the game, we'll take anything we can hand on. He said, okay, are you sure? And I said, well, sure. They sent us five truckloads, five truckloads of refrigerators, furnaces, water heaters. Now, like the guy called me and he said, Cooper, I hope you don't mind that some of these are slightly damaged. And I'm, th I'm looking at him thinking, it looked like somebody dropped the crate and maybe dented the box or maybe there might somebody, and we saw one of them that somebody had hit it with a little forklift and bent some of the trim. Guys, we're talking like Norcold and Dometic refrigerators, you know, those big old four door, they got ice makers, water in the door, you know, those that cost four, five grand a piece. They sent us eight of those Norcold refrigerators. And then I can't tell you how many air conditioners. Now, some of them, all that was wrong with them is the box had gotten wet. And so what they were doing is they were clearing out their inventory and they brought it to us. So five truckloads. And so all of a sudden now we've got all kinds of equipment to work with. And so the key to this whole experience is getting the equipment that we can work with and put our hands on, whether you're doing inspections or you're doing maintenance. Okay. Now, those of you that have taken classes with us, you know about the purple monkey. You guys understand what we're talking about when we say, you know, the purple monkey. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that we talk about in the first week, the RV maintenance course, where we describe what happens in our head when we come up against something. Say we have a situation take place and all of a sudden we've got all this little talk going on in our head. And, you know, we call it self-speak. And sometimes our self-speak can get a little negative. But those of you that have been through the classes with us, you know what we have to do is we have to learn to step back and ask some questions. And typically what we know is 80% of the things that go wrong with these RVs are things that you and I can fix if we just know how to access it and somebody will just show us how. I mean, that's 80% of it. And guys, I have known this and I keep preaching it because it's true. 80% of the things that go wrong with these RVs are easy to access and easy to fix. And those of you that have taken the maintenance classes, you totally get it. You understand because you guys send me stories. You send me text messages. I get emails from people. I mean, today I had three emails from folks sharing with me some of the things that they were troubleshooting. And six months ago, some of these folks couldn't do anything because there was that fear of what was going on. And folks, this is where we need your help. Because as ambassadors, you're going to help us to open the door for a lot of folks. Because if that fear comes over you, we back up, we cow down. But if we've got knowledge and understanding how a situation works, we don't back off. We have confidence. Now, those of you that set in the classes with us, you remember that purple monkey that I shared with you about my friend Jim, who's a service manager over a store out in Fort Worth, how he went out, the lady had him out there in his RV. Every time she flushed the toilet, the television went off. Now, Jim had gone through a pretty stressful day that morning before this lady showed up, so his head was not screwed on straight. And when this woman drug him out here, basically, and told him to, well, didn't drag him, told him to come out here, and he said, the way she spoke to him sounded like his mother. He said, I went out there and sat in the couch, remember? And when she flushed the toilet, the television went off. That's what happens to people. They get into this lifestyle and all kinds of things start happening. Now, I know that most of us are kind of in an emergency declaration and we're locked down. I know that this 
video will probably be seen by many, many people, maybe even months, even years after we've, we've had the situation with the virus clear up. But here's the thing. We know what's going to happen in the economy. I have already gotten phone calls. I've already gotten emails from folks saying, Cooper, I'm looking for a job. I got laid off. Or I've had somebody tell me, said, you know what? I realize that I have been working way too many hours on this job, and I'm already beginning to enjoy spending time with my children. And I've had other people say, well, you know, I don't want to fly on an airplane anymore, or I don't want to take a cruise ship anymore because of all these other situations. And what's going to happen to us, mark my word, we're going to have an explosion of RVers come on the marketplace. And what that's going to do is that's going to drive this market. They're going to be needing more mobile technicians, and we're going to be needing more RV inspectors. I mean, I get emails all the time, people talking about and sharing they went out to do an inspection on an RV and the people come to them later, the customer comes to them and said, you know, thank you for pointing out some things here. You know, you could, you wouldn't tell me should I buy it or not, but you gave me the information I need so I can make the good decision. And some people say, hey, I'm walking away from it. Others say, hey, I've got a chance I can negotiate a better deal. But whichever way it goes, you and I, when we help those kind of folks, it makes all the difference in the world. And that's that's really what we're supposed to be doing in this lifestyle, helping others help themselves. Now, one of the things that I wanna point out to you is here's how we stop the purple monkey in his tracks. We've gotta help others to invest in themselves. I've had people tell me, say, oh, I, I just can't afford to go to class. I can't afford, it. and I'm looking at them thinking, if you're gonna live in the lifestyle, you need to know how to take care of your equipment. But not only take care of your equipment, but there's gonna be times you're gonna be sitting in that RV park and somebody next to you is gonna be so frustrated and you can see the stress between the family. And if you and I just step in and say, can I help you with this? I, I think we can take care of this then what we do is we help them ratchet down that stress and they enjoy the lifestyle that they've come to have. But here's the thing, if we help them invest in themselves, yes, we didn't feed them, but we helped them learn how to fish. And that's where we need to go because if we'll help them learn, they'll gain the confidence that they need. I mean, I hear it over and over again. Once I put my hands on it, once I understood how it worked, I can go do this and most people can. And I'm going to encourage you, you know, I've sat and talked to Mike and Betty. We did the Dallas RV show and we were talking about some different things that were going on. And guys, I, the more actively involved the ambassadors are, the better the whole program works. I mean, Steve and Kathy Jo Anderson have got a phenomenal situation here called Work Camper News. And I'm telling you, I am astounded as the number of people that come through that program that they have and when they do their rendezvous. And then pretty soon some of these people start searching out information. And that's why, like I said, we built the National RV Training Academy because we used to travel on the road and we couldn't go as deep as we needed to because we didn't have the equipment. Now that I've got this 15,000 square training facility with refrigerators out my nose and I've got four storage containers out back that are full, we've got equipment to work with. And we call it the petting zoo. But I want to encourage you to get actively involved in this work camper ambassador because folks, we need we need about 1,800 RV inspectors across the nation. And right now we're standing somewhere a little over about 400, I think is what I understood. But here's the thing about it. We, I see emails come across all the time where they're looking for inspectors at different parts of the country because there was no one there. So what they do is they do an all call. Now we're picking up a lot of those situations, but once we get people aware that you can get a home inspection for your RV, we have to develop more inspectors. And that's where you as an ambassador come into play. You can tell the story and help people make some decisions so that way they can start a business and travel on the road, cover their expenses, and maybe even do better if they just have a new skill and a new talent. And that's what I believe is going to happen when all of the dust settles from this situation with this virus. Now, up to now, there's only been two ways for us to be able to get education. One, come and spend the days in class with us. So in this situation, you know, come and spend five days with us and, and take the RV tech course. 
Well, that sounds great because we all know the tech course, the, the RV maintenance course is another name we give it. That maintenance course is the foundation. It's kind of like taking, if you took college and you understand, you know, remember when English 101, Everybody took English 101. Didn't matter if you were an engineer or you were, you know, a psych major or an accountant. Everybody took English 101. Well, that's what we do here. Remember, those of you who came through the program, you took the five day hands on. From there, you can split out and go different ways. Some of you say, hey, I'm going to go become an inspector. I want to do home inspections on RVs. Others of you say, no, I want to hang around another four weeks. I want to take some classes, put my hands on. I want to work on air conditioners. I want to work on refrigerators, furnaces, water heaters. I want to learn how to work on the exterior systems. Well, that's great. But there's some people say, look, I don't have time. I, I, don't, have, I don't have enough vacation. I have this J-O-B. Well, in the last two weeks, we have had a phenomenal number of people that come to us and said, look, I was scheduled to come to that very next class, that live class, but they have got us locked down to where we can't. Is there another way? So what we started doing then is going to option number two and send them the home study option. So you can get it in a box. It's got all the books, everything that you need. And what we have done is we recorded that home study option and give the people a chance to go through it because we broke the modules up into about oh eight to 15 minutes long and so you can play it on your computer you also have the option where if you have good internet uh, high-speed internet you can just pull it off the line because we have access to where you can download it but so either you take it through the five-day hands-on or you can take it through the live class I'm sorry, let me say that again. Take it either the five days hands-on live class or take the RV tech course, okay? And that had been the only way to do it. Well, all of a sudden now, we have a lockdown. Here in, in Athens, our county is Henderson County. The uh, co county commissioners, we had not had anyone infected with it. Uh, I found out this, I think it was yesterday, we've had one. But they said in order for us to maintain, we're going to, we're going to put in place two things. One, groups can't be any larger than 10. So you cannot socialize any bigger than a, t and a group of 10. Two, there'll be all the schools are closing. Well, both of those shot us in the foot. It's kind of like, how do we do this? I mean, we had, I think Evita told me we had like 31 or 32 people scheduled for class on Monday and we couldn't have classes. So we just, you know, as you guys will know, we're people of faith, and we say, Lord, what do we do? We have all these people that are locked down. They can't come. And Evita come to me, and she said, Cooper, and, and, and I love this woman dearly because I tell you what, sometimes she'd come up with some things. I'm just shaking my head, like, where did you get this? She said, I've been thinking about this. She says, you know how when you have lemons, how you make lemon pie? And I'm thinking, no, honey, the saying is when you have lemon, you make lemonade. She said, no, no, no. As a cook, you make lemon pie. I said, okay, I, I'll give you that one, all right? So she said, I think we need to make lemon pie. I said, well, explain it to me. What are you talking about? She said, well, we have the home study option, right? We've got people that can take the course home study-wise. But really what we want them to do is to go deeper because we know that people learn better if they can put their hands on things. She said, so what if we had a hybrid course? I said, okay. She said, we have the home study. And says, you know, we've got fiber optics here. So we've got high-speed internet. We can actually film instructors giving their classes. I said, so you're saying give everybody a chance to look the home study go through it, get it down, and then bring the instructor in. She said, yes, just like in college. You remember how the instructor would give you, you know, this is your lessons, this is your homework, see these videos, read this material, and I'll see you in class next week. Well, we'd walk into classroom. By golly, if you wanted to keep up, you better have read the material, seen the videos, done the homework, whatever, because that instructor then teaches on the high points and the key things of the material. But also he opens it up or he or she opens it up to question and answer. And I'm thinking, well, that's great. However, what do we do about showing them how things done? She said, we'll just use those GoPro cameras. If we're going to be talking about refrigerators, we'll take that GoPro camera and we'll get down close to where people can see what we're talking about, that component. 
that propane flame, that heating element, or, or on the refrigerators, you know, I mean, on the water heaters or the air conditioners, we get up close so they can see it. And then it gives them a chance to ask questions. And we can stream those short videos, you know, where we're showing people, we can stream it to them so they can see it. And then, of course, have the Q&A. And as she said, then what we need to do, we need to give everyone that has taken this, this hybrid class one year to come and take the live class here in Athens. So take all of the material again, do hands-on, and then in these hands-on labs, what we do is we go through and we you know, explain how it works, get you to take it apart, put it back together, and then we put bugs in it, let you troubleshoot it. Because it's then that you and I learn how, because most of us here in the United States are hands-on learners. It's because what our DNA is made up of, right? We were settled by a bunch of craftsmen and tradesmen. They came here, they worked with their hands. And so we're just part of that gene pool. So what, the, what we're doing now is that we are now offering the hybrid training. And this hybrid training gives us the ability to take the home study, which we've already got recorded. We do live stream with an instructor who does Q&A and also streams in the material. So that way people can see up close. So one of the things that we've always struggled with is how do you teach someone how to do a propane leak test? You know, that time pressure drop test where you, most times we go to the cooktop, right? Put the manometer there. Well, by taking this camera, we can go in there and we can show that instructor removing the top of the cooktop or wherever they're gonna have to access the gas line at, put their manometer on there, show them how to do it and, and talk everybody through it so we know how to do it. Then. In one year, we can come back, you can take the classes and demonstrate that you know how to do it. And while you're here, then that's when you sit down and you take your certification exams. And we have just released that we now have registered certification, certified and master certified. What has happened is the industry has gone into lockdown to where there is no training going on. And so, We've decided what the National RV Training Academy is going to do is we're going to put the credentials in place so that way when you come and spend time doing the hands-on, then what that allows you to do is to also stay behind after we finish the class, take the test, get your certifications, your certificates, all the things that you need so you can be a registered or a certified or a master certified technician. Those of you that stay with us, through the inspection process. You remember when you finish your RV maintenance course, then you can set and take the code of ethics and standards of practice exams, and that gives you your level one RV inspector. And those of you that want to go to the next level, which is our, what we call our level two, you know, you stay an extra week with Howard and Pam and, and they, they coach you through and show you how to use software. And you, when you finish that week and you get your two mock inspections done, then you are a level two RV inspector. So we've tried to set this thing up so that way, regardless of what's going on in our country, you and I can still move forward. And folks, that's where we need your help. We need you to look at your life and say, okay, what opportunities can I have? I mean, Mike and Betty, I mean, guys, I, I, I would sit, when I was doing the Dallas RV show with them, I would sit in the back and just listen in. These two tag team very, very well. I mean, Betty's talking to the ladies and Mike's talking to the men. And then when they finish with their classes, you almost have to push them out of the room so that way the next group can come in and do their set of seminars because people come up and they're hungry for information. So my question to you is, is this you? Is that silhouette you? Because folks, we need ambassadors out here telling the story, telling it often, telling, because what happens is I can share it, but they say, oh yeah, 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 you're just one of the instructors. But when you have people like these two right here, Mike and Betty, and you talking about it, people listen. They pay attention to what's going on because quite honestly, people are searching for opportunities. People are searching for things. And many times those fears go away if we just have the knowledge. And so you as an ambassador can help that knowledge go away. And you can help people learn how they can invest in themselves so that way they can be successful as they live this lifestyle and travel across the country. So with that being said, I want to thank you. 
if you haven't been to the Big Red and if you haven't been to the National RV Training Academy, just remember all roads lead to Athens, Texas. We're exactly 72 miles southeast of downtown Dallas. We're only about two hours north of Houston. We're only about, uh, I believe, about an hour and 45 minutes from Shreveport, Louisiana. So, guys, we've got Interstate 45, 35, 20, and 30 all covered, and, co and, and you can just, you have no excuse. But come, whether you just come and spend time in the RV park, because you know we've got the RV park that the, R the Big Red was built on the land there where the RV park is. So now you can stay at the RV park, go to school, and we've got folks that say, you know, can I bring a rally? Come on, you know, we'll help you put together some classes. But the big thing is we need we need ambassadors to be out there telling the story and telling it often. So with that, I want to thank you for spending time with us. And just remember, we're here to help you guys so you can help others. Of course. Cooper? Yes, ma'am? You have outdone yourselves, and I've actually been in tears <laughs> because you are so right oh. on, and it's amazing, and I totally it agree. Is. Lady E, you have made an incredible lemon pie here today, and she would be so she would be so proud. Thank you so much. And I have a product right here of all the information and all the education that is available. I am blessed to be married to Mr. Wonderful, and Mr. Wonderful was never a handyman in the corporate world but ladies and gentlemen i'm telling you that this guy because of cooper and his staff and their expertise has rocked his world and and it has given us confidence and peace as we travel the world and the united states in our rv and at two or three o'clock in the morning we are knocked out of our beds because of this incredible noise that we are hearing and he doesn't panic he starts thinking and we he's even made a list today of some of the things that uh that have taken place because of the training that he received with you guys so we can't thank you enough and thank you for joining us and what you got oh my goodness i'm i'm like betty i'm in tears just listening to you cooper. <laughs> uh yeah words uh and there's no no doubt folks uh cooper is speaking from his heart uh, whereas mm -hmm. the the, uh, the guy him and lady e the andersons uh uh they they've just been great for us so whereas I no doubt we would not be RVing today had we not taken the NRVTA classes. Uh, and when you hear this list of things, we bought a brand new Tiffin in 2016. And it's not if something's going to happen, it's when something's going to happen. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're on a Tiffin. I just went down uh, uh, visiting with our neighbor war campers. They have a Monarch, which is the, I mean, it is the, one of the top of the lines. And he was just telling me about all his problems. And I was laying there last night thinking about the webinar, and, and I said, what all has gone wrong for us? And uh, and I got up and just started writing them down, and Betty typed it up for me. Let me just tell you what's happened to this brand new RV. And talking about inspections, and Cooper can tell you, the inspectors are inspecting brand new RVs and are finding out the gas wasn't connected. Uh, uh, the things that are wrong with brand new RVs. So. Maybe if you can buy you, someone else has already fixed it. I don't know what the what the scenario. But uh, coming back from picking up our brand new uh, motorhome, the engine light comes on. Uh, engine coil lowers, pull in an auto zone. They test it. They said it's your engine coil. They sold me a $35 part. And uh, the RV dealer had they run the, uh, the test, and the part was $435. So I fixed it for $35. A step motor went out, Amazon $75, RV dealer wanted $250. The slide solenoid, slides would not come in when we got ready to move, uh, checked it out. It was a solenoid, uh, replaced the solenoid for $70. RV dealer wanted $300 to replace the solenoid. The loud blowing this um, yesterday morning when we turned our heat on was horrible. It filled our motor home full of burnt rubber. And uh, so I go out there, trace it back to our furnace, and when I open up the furnace, there is just gadgets all over where the blower blew up in the furnace. 
So I called the uh, call Tiffin. I says, you know, gave him the model number and I uh, said, are you sitting down? That motor is $536. So with labor, $750 to replace that. I called the local RV dealer. Can I just buy the blower uh, to this motor? And they said, yeah, for $17. And it is repaired and we have heat going right now. <laughs> you know? That's phenomenal. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it just, you know, front grill comes off the motorhome over $700. It didn't cost me anything. I, was, I put it back on because uh, I was able to get it under the, the part covered under warranty. Refrigerator went out. Everybody on RV site says two to 3000 We got it done for $800 uh, whereas by doing it ourselves. And, uh, and I, it just goes on. But anyway, everything that we have fixed on our brand new RV, my parts was $1,137. The dealer, RV dealer, to do the same thing was $5,135. Uh, I said, wow, when I added it up this morning, I could not believe this. I was, and no doubt, not just the price of that, but the, this, the, the, uh, the peace that we had and not oh, getting goodness. so discouraged. Yeah. You know, this morning, it was, had I not been through the RV tech school and was able to repair that, we would have pulled out of here so quick and went back home and got in our rocker and retired, retired, retired. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm just telling you, and, uh, you know, but not, or, and Cooper mentioned another thing, or worse, I can't tell you over the last six years that we've been on the road, how many times I've been able to help my neighbor repair something, or worse, and they, uh, this elderly gentleman last year came over here, and uh, he was almost in tears, or worse, he needed something checked, and he called, and RV dealer wanted $140 just to come look at it. He asked if I'd take a look at it because we had our sign out front saying RV tech, RV inspector. And uh, so went over there. Within five minutes, I had him fitched. And uh, he, he had to give me $20. I, was, I kept giving it back to him, but he gave it to me. And I kept it as a blessing to him. And he was he was crying. And uh, <laughs> just just amazing, you know, to, to, to help somebody. And uh, there was, we got a lady that just lost her husband right next to us. So where's uh, her roof is leaking. Her husband died last year. So Kyle and I, are, we're going to, we're going to put a new roof on our RV, a new sealer. And that's some things we learned from the maintenance course and, uh, and other courses. I, I was, I'm about halfway through my RV tech right now, but uh, you know, we as ambassadors, not only, you know, what I want to challenge you is to get the home study course. If you have not gone through any of the courses, for your own knowledge and then help others and then start selling these kits. I see the NRVTA, the, the biggest thing that I told Cooper and uh, at the Cooper and Anderson is that we're going to sell 200 kits this year. Uh, we're a long ways from it. Uh, I, and, and, and if the ambassadors don't sell it, then, then Betty and I have got to get out and start knocking on doors because I've committed to 200 uh, home study courses being sold. Uh, we are convinced that the peace of mind from the ambassadors, we have 200 and something uh, ambassadors, or whereas the peace y'all are going to have if you have the course, and it's, it's not 397, it's 239, uh, 239, you just email, just email Lady E and she will send it direct to you, you use it, then you can sell it for 397, uh, you know, so. Uh, and then you've got a year to go and take the hands-on maintenance course, and they're going to credit to $300 back. But don't forget, the biggest commission we have as ambassadors is through NRVTA. And I just want to go over those with you again. Uh, the RV maintenance course, one week, uh, that's hands-on. In other words, if you refer someone to take that course, they're going to send you $164 in commission. The home study course is um the worst now the the, the week-long course is sixteen hundred dollars you're gonna get 164 you sell the home study course for 397 they're gonna give you 158 almost as much as the as the full week course uh and that's something they've agreed and this was not like this uh, a few years ago mm -hmm. uh they raised that commission no worse because they we feel like in the coopers they feel like that the the that we've got to get the home study course out to these RVers, uh not only for themselves but to help others and also recruiting other ambassadors we've had the privilege of bringing in some other ambassadors and and you're going to get your commission check for that so um i know the andersons and the coopers are wanting to write checks during this downtime uh and and get those commissions out so uh while we're sitting here kind of kind of dormant or whereas we are talking to some rv dealers we're talking to some other campgrounds and uh you know, when we hit the road again, we're going to be here for probably two or three months. We're, we're camping at, at Claybo's and uh, 
So, and we're going to be talking to some of the, and there are campers in the campground now, you know, it's just, we can't get close to them right now. So uh, we are out there doing a lot of yard work right now. And, uh, but uh, we just want to encourage you uh, and, and we're still having fun. I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's fun talking about this because we know what it's done for our lives. And uh, of course, we, we, just because of us taking the courses, we're, we hope to enjoy this lifestyle till we die. You know, and uh, we hope it's a long time and uh, we can get over this virus and uh, uh, in the nation and uh, and we're all going to be better for it. And just like Mike said, it's not a it's not when or if it's not if a situation is going to come up that you're going to need the knowledge from Cooper's training and all of his staff. But it's when. So, Cooper, what were you fixing to say? I interrupted you. I, well, you know, in many of the ki many of the groups we visit with, it's there's a solo, a lady typically. Ladies are more courageous than men. I kid you not. Yeah. If if you have a part, you have a couple, and maybe the gentleman passes away. If the couple were really thinking about doing this RV lifestyle, and the gentleman passes away, the lady will press mm -hmm. on. That's typically what we see over and over again. One of the big things that we find is that inspectors many times ask if if they say, can you, do you happen to have a lady inspector? I would like to have some lady come in and visit with me and look at my RV or look at this RV that I want to buy. And then we also have situations come up to where dealerships are approaching and said, look, do you have any ladies? I need ladies to talk to other ladies. We have customers that come in that say, don't you have a service advisor that's a lady that could visit with me? And then we also know that in these RV parks, we always have, we're always drawn to the people that are just like us. So ladies look after ladies many, many times that, and so if you have knowledge, you can help those other ladies. So I will tell you, when I look at the scores and the things that take place when, you, when the ladies come through, Usually the ladies are putting a stomp on things because, quite honestly, they're committed to make it happen. And so I want to encourage you, don't back off. If you say, well, I'm really, I've never done anything technical. That's okay. We're going to show you. We're going to help you. And you're going to be able to do it yourself so you can help others. So, ladies, don't back off. Keep plowing on. We need you. We need you to jump in with us. Thank you, Cooper. And it's amazing when we work the uh, RV shows, the uh, the ladies that we have the opportunity to talk to that are traveling the United States. And uh, uh, it, it's, it is. It's amazing. And what a, what a blessing it is. So thanks again so much, Cooper. We appreciate everything y'all are doing at the uh, Big Red Schoolhouse. And Guys and gals, if you have the, ever have the opportunity and are close by, I mean, it's worth a day trip just to go see this facility and um, to camp. We are, we are there a good bit camping, and we enjoy, uh, enjoy being there. And they have cabins also at the, uh, uh, the RV park if you don't have your rig with you. But Bring your fishing rods. they got a big lake. Yes, a big lake, <laughs> yes. <laughs> So thank you so much, and we do appreciate it. So just one more reminder, work campers, that um, uh, our ambassadors that we had talked about in our last webinar, the importance of you supporting work camper news by being a member also of work camper news. So I know there's still a few of us out there that uh, are not, and we're going to be getting in touch with you just to uh, just to remind you, just a little friendly reminder. But we've got to support work camper news and uh, in our VTA. So we hope that a lot of questions have been answered today. I don't see, uh, Dana, that we have any questions posted. And, uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't ask us any questions anytime with all of the uh, recent uh, emails and all that we've sent personally to each one of you. You've got all of our contact information as well as Mike's cell phone number. His phone rings off and on all during the day and we love that because we won't we are when we say we are there for you we are there for you and uh we just uh godspeed on everything mm -hmm. that's going on this too shall pass and we're all yeah, going to be yeah. stronger because yeah. of it and uh so we just want to uh 
to thank you again for joining us today. And Dana, any words for the ambassadors before we close? Um, I would just like for them to go in there and look at the RBN Network website and look at the booklet that Jody mentioned that she put together. It, it's got some great information. Um, we no longer have our brochures. We're handing out flyers for membership levels. And I think that is, it looks great and it's a good tool. So go check that out. And um, if you have any questions for me, you can call Work News or get me at Dana at WorkTemper.com. And I hope that every one of you stay safe, all of us. Please. All right. All of these trying times that we are going through right now. It will Amen. pass. It yes, will pass. it will. All right, guys, this is uh, the close of this webinar. We look forward to our next one. But like I said, with the closing of it doesn't mean that we're not here for you. So be sure and contact us if we can help you with anything in the future. Until then, just be safe and have a blessed evening. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh my gosh, he makes me cry. Oh my gosh. Call him and tell him he has made us cry. Yep. 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 Yes. Yeah.